Well, we're, we're here today. We're happy to say that um, the murder suspect in the Ida Jefferson homicide has turned himself in. Uh, Joaquin Starks turned himself in to the Sandy Springs Police Department in Georgia at uh, approximately, uh, hang on a second here, 1.40 p.m. today. Sandy Springs is located, uh, it's a north suburb of Atlanta, Georgia. He is going to be transported to the Fulton County Jail down there. Uh, apparently he had been, uh, hearing that he uh, had been wanted for questioning, he turned himself in and said, uh, he uh, turned himself in and saying that uh, there was something about uh, domestic violence he'd heard that he needed to be questioned about. So. Uh, he uh, apparently has been following the story on the internet. He was brought to that location by a, uh, by another male acquaintance and apparently had been staying with him for a brief time in Georgia. We're not sure how long he's been in Georgia. He, uh, I believe, has been getting uh, communication from family members that have been encouraging him to turn himself in and I think all of that together has kind of helped uh, make him go ahead and make the move and, and turn himself in. So we're happy to say that he is in custody now at this time. Do you have any idea why he went to Georgia? Uh, I don't know other than possibly for this acquaintance. You said that he said he heard he was wanted for questioning so is he admitting that he knows that he did shoot her, or is he saying otherwise? What's he saying at the time? I don't think he's made any admissions uh, down there at this time. Chief, I assume the name was put into the NCIC almost immediately. Is that a pretty quick match once he turned himself in down there? I'm sure it was, yes. It was an NCIC, so that goes everywhere. And I'm sure when he turned himself in, they just did a, a quick check there and found out, in fact, that, that we, he was wanted here. Do they do any type of questioning on their part, or did they contact Evansville Police directly? Uh, there was, I believe, some attempt to question him at, this, at that location, and he has invoked his rights at this point. Will uh, officers from Evansville Police Department then arrange for transport, or how does that work? Well, it depends. I mean, if he waives extradition, we should be able to get him fairly quickly. Otherwise, we'll have to go through the extradition process to get him back. Uh, then it's, it's basically the Sheriff's Department's responsibility then to, to get him back to this jurisdiction. Do we know how he got to Georgia because there was that vehicle found on Burkhart Road on Saturday morning? How did he get there and did he get any help getting there? Right. We don't know at this point how he got there, if there was help or if he drove a vehicle. Uh, no vehicle has been associated with him at this point uh, down in Georgia. Well, it, it always makes us feel a lot better when somebody that's committed something has as horrendous as a murder if we get him in custody. Uh, it, it, it always helps, like in this case at the beginning when you knew pretty well immediately who the suspect was. Uh, at least we, we had that going for us. It's, it's a lot better to start off that way than to start off with a homicide that you have no clue who committed it. But uh, that helped us in this case. And then as I said, you, you really feel uh, good about getting them behind bars. Obviously a murder charge, will there be any uh, flight from justice charges as well? Or, or? Well, at this point it will be a murder charge. Uh, that will be up to the prosecutor if you want to add any of that. You, you can't get any more than murder. If we get a conviction for murder, then that's everything else is inconsequential to that. What is kind of the general timetable? First off, when will you know if he's going to waive extradition? And then if he, if he doesn't, how long does that typically take for him to, to get back here? At, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, he, we should know, I would say, by tomorrow whether he's going to waive extradition or not. Uh, the process for getting him back here, I would say, would probably be within a week or, or within a week to, to get him back. I'm not real sure on that, though. And do you know th this acquaintance, did you say he was staying with him? That's the in information we received, that he was staying with this person, and I think not only family members were encouraging him to turn himself in, but I believe this, this person had encouraged him to turn himself in as well. And that's what led to him doing that. Where were these family members? Are they here in Evansville in the Tri-State area? 
I believe so. I'm not real sure where all they were coming from, but uh, it seems like everybody was giving the same message. You know, turn yourself in. It's it's no good to stay out the way you're doing right now. So if that's the case, then were you in contact with these family members? Because obviously they had to have some kind of point of contact with him. Was it via cell phone? Um, how was that working? I'm not real sure how the contact was being made. Uh, I, I know that he had a cell phone, but I'm not sure if that was the way that, that they were communicating. But uh, the information we'd received is that family members were somehow having communication with him and telling him to turn himself in.